First, we're off to Munich. The people here say this is a great place to enjoy life. And art. The old Pinakothek Museum offers visitors a chance to see European painting between the 14th and 18th centuries. Great painters such as Albrecht Dürer are on display here. As well as Peter Paul Rubens. A special hall was built here just for his painting, The Great Last Judgment. The Rubens collection in the old Pinakothek is the only one of its kind in the world. The old Pinakothek really plays there in the big leagues with the most famous galleries in the world, thanks in large part to the Wittelsbach family and their passion for collecting. One of the Wittelsbachs was Bavaria's King Ludwig I. He played a decisive role in making Munich a city of art. Ludwig founded the new Pinakothek in 1853. It focuses on the 19th century and has many landscape paintings he commissioned. Ludwig also bought many great works of art and set high standards for art appreciation in society. The construction of museums and building up collections was a very important element of his reign for him. By collecting art, he wanted to promote culture, and these museums were intended to contribute to the education of the people and to make the Kingdom of Bavaria a cultured state. The next stop on our journey is Frankfurt. Public art has a long history in this city of banks and finance. The museum embankment is the site of some of the most important galleries, such as the Stedel Museum, named for its founder, banker Johann Friedrich Stedel. The collection presents European art history, from medieval to Baroque and classical modernism to the present. In 2012, the Stedel opened a new underground exhibition space especially for contemporary art. 195 skylights allow daylight into the rooms situated below the Stedel Garden. I think it's pretty cool. I especially like the skylights because of the way they let in natural light. The Kunsthalle Schön in Frankfurt's historic district stages internationally acclaimed exhibitions. Planning for a temporary exhibition can take as long as three years before the paintings finally hang on the walls. Pablo Picasso, Edvard Munch and Gustav Kailbot, world-renowned artists, are presented here in new and unfamiliar ways. The Schön is one of the main reasons for Frankfurt's ever-growing reputation as a city of art. Generally speaking, Frankfurt is now one of the really interesting centers for the visual arts after Berlin and Munich, both in terms of museums and in terms of exhibitions. Our final destination is Berlin. The German capital is constantly changing, but there's also lasting beauty, and that can be found on the museum island. The unique feature of the Museum Island is the museums themselves, five buildings that have made museum history. They are special because of their architecture, from Carl Friedrich Schenkel to David Chipperfield, and in the way they present artworks, and of course in the uniqueness of their collections. The Pergamon Museum, which opened in 1930, is one of the biggest attractions. Reconstructed ancient sites, such as the Pergamon altar, give visitors a glimpse into past cultures. Treasures such as the Roman market gate of Miletus were discovered in excavations carried out mainly in the early 20th century. And here is the Ishtar Gate of Babylon. Fragments of colored ceramic tiles enabled an impressive reconstruction. Another jewel of the museum island is the Bode Museum, which displays an extensive collection of sculptures. The works date from the early Middle Ages to the late 18th century, including late German Gothic and early Italian Renaissance. The Bode Museum's art, surrounded by elegant architecture, offers visitors a great way to spend an afternoon.